Okay, today I'm going to show you how to put together a top drip bucket system. It's a really easy system to put together. It's essentially a 5 gallon pail or 18 liters. And then um, the lid has a 6 inch net pot in it that just goes inside like so. The media and the plant goes inside here, grows up, and then we're going to have a top drip which is going to water the media area right here. So essentially what I'm going to do is show you how to put that together. Um, one of the big benefits to a system like this over my last deep water culture is that if you can see I've placed a 9 liter mark inside the bucket. This will uh, be just slightly higher than the pump that I'm going to use. And um, so when the pump's inside here, it'll just be slightly higher than the water level. So basically it's just going to be about double the height of the top of the, uh, the pump. So the advantage to that is instead of having to fill the container all the way to the top like you would in a deep water culture or just slightly under the media, um, you'd be able to keep a much lower reservoir and then you'd be able to just pump the water up inside to where the media sits and then any of the nutrient or the water that the plant doesn't use will just go back down and keep recycling. So. Uh, it's a great way to save on uh, nutrient here. Now this bucket I just picked up at uh, just at Canadian Tire. It's a white pail. Um, it's it's fairly opaque, so it will keep a lot of the light out. But one of the things that I found in my last system that I built was there was still some light that got in. So I just want to try to protect that from happening. If it was the summer and I had the ability to, I would go outside and spray paint this black, but uh, it's too cold to do that and I don't have enough ventilation in the uh, basement. So I'm just going to use uh, some black gaff tape for now and just tape up the bucket and that will keep the light out. Alright, so I have that all finished up. See it's nicely covered in black. Uh, the bottom you don't have to worry about because it'll be on the ground anyway so no light will get through. So we're all done with the taping. The next thing we want to address is the pump that's going to fit inside, right? So if we just place the pump inside, you can see we have the cord that hangs out. So what I want to do is just create a little notch right in the side so that we can put the lid on and the cord's going to stay flush. To do this I just have a quarter inch bit on my drill and I'm just going to hold it sideways to the bucket and you can see that it's just a, a real nice notch that's just sort of flush with the, uh, the bucket itself so once we place the lid on top it'll still snap down and the cord won't be in the way. Now why we have the uh, the drill out and the bit attached, we might as well make our two holes for a drip feed. Um, one line, we're going to need two lines. One line is going to be the line that uh, sends water to the inside. The other line is going to be for an air stone that I might add later on down the road just to add a little bit more oxygen in the uh, nutrient solution. So I'm just going to go ahead and put two holes in. Great, so now we have our two holes, and each one of the holes will fit our tubing. It's a quarter inch. Now the next thing I want to look at is the actual supply line that will be supplying our nutrient solution. So here I just have a um, a pump that I bought off eBay. I bought five of these for uh, $50 shipped. Um, it came with an actual uh, adapter that allows for the quarter inch tubing. So you just screw that into the top of the pump. And we can place that inside the bucket. The next thing we want to do is we want to make sure we have the right amount of tubing for our drip. So we want to make sure that we have 
from the hole to the middle. So kind of measure that out. And then the other part you want is from that point to the inside. And then you want to measure that out as well. So um, I usually go with an extra couple of centimeters just to give yourself uh, a little room to play with. And we'll go ahead and just cut that there. Like so. We're, one, we're gonna run one end up through the one of the holes that we just made. Just like that. And then once the hydrotin's in, we can go ahead and start assembling the rest of our system. So, I have these uh, two gallon per hour flag drip lines. I bought these on eBay as well. They were about a uh, dollar for, um, sorry, they're about three dollars for ten. It looks like one of those, okay? So what you can see is, if we have this piece attached, the reason why I chose to use one of these drip flags is the actual pump itself is a 400 gallon per hour pump. So if I just ran a straight line to the media, then in an hour's time I would be just drenching and soaking the stuff. So I want to keep it something a little bit lower. So having something that I can use to regulate it is really great. Okay, so the next bit that you're going to need is one of these tubing stakes. Uh, again, bought these off eBay, a couple bucks. Okay. And this is going to allow us to just sort of set up a base and give us the ability to move the, uh, the irrigation around to wherever we want it to be. So, in order to do that, I need a small piece of my line. I'm going to say about, uh, you know, three centimeters or so should do it. And we can attach one end to the drip emitter. And the other end, we can attach to the stake. Now you just want to work your stake in until you get a nice good spot for it. Then you can see in this configuration right now, you would be able to have this drip line dripping down just near the media. Um, that would be great for a seedling. You might even want just a slightly bigger hose so that there's not as much uh, travel distance for the drip or you can just sort of reposition it better so that the drip line is just dripping directly into the, uh, the media itself. Um, that's really great to start for the seedlings, and that's probably the configuration I'm going to use to start the system. Um, but when the plant starts to become uh, a much bigger plant, and one of the reasons to build a system like this is to sustain a larger plant like a um, larger tomato, I'm going to be using a T-connector to make a bigger drip area. So again, uh, the T-connector, uh, a cheap eBay purchase, uh, cost about uh, two or three bucks for a uh, tent. And I bought this at Home Depot. This is a um, drip line, and basically it's an irrigation line. It, it's almost the same as the uh, quarter inch line, except it has a lot of perforations in it. So this whole line will drip. I want to determine how big of a piece I would need to make a circle that would sort of encompass uh, just slightly in from each of the sides of the whole bit, right? So that looks about right there. Go ahead and cut that piece at that point. And then you can see all I have to do is just add my T-joint, 
So all I'm doing is just adding my T-joint here, right? And then I have an actual little circle that goes inside. All right, well, let's give it a try. I've filled up my water to the, uh, the nine liter line. So it's uh, half of this uh, container's content and attach our hose. So, pump goes back in. Alright, let's plug it in and uh, see how it works. So you can see here we have it just sort of dripping away and that will eventually soak the media and feed the plant. Alright, lastly I wanted to show you a quick tip. I've taken a, a 2 liter pop bottle and I've just cut it in half and if you put it like so into your medium, then you can actually create a little bit of a then you can actually create a little bit of a humidity dome for your seedlings as they start. So uh, that's just a quick tip. I think I'm going to give it a try on uh, this particular project and see how it goes. And uh, I'll let you guys know. Thanks. Bye.